You know, we, we did our conversation um, last week talking about Ed Pisker's uh, suicide note and the things that he had to say. We kind of left out the people they were talking about or the people that Ed Pisker himself blamed and basically said, these are the people that did it um, and put the names out there. But the people going out there and acting like Ed Pisker killing himself and we need to coddle these people, and make sure that they feel okay about it. Yeah, we need to, we need to, you know, oh, uh, Alex DeCampi, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm so sorry that your viciousness finally saw somebody kill themselves. You know, uh, oh, you, you must be, you must really be hurting. So the, the reactions have been very, very weird. I, I, I'll be honest, I anticipated most people to stay quiet or um, to be on the side of Ed Pisker on this one, because this is truly a tragedy like we haven't seen anything this like this in comic books in a very long time this is an enormous tragedy that a lot of people at least, at least a few about. years since since zoe quinn uh, you know well that wasn't comic way. books that's no, true that she, was, just got into comic, she just got she just got rewarded with some comic books afterwards yeah but well, within comic books this is probably the biggest thing or the biggest tragedy really since eddie Berganza, probably right yeah, I mean, you know, since, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say so, or at least the biggest scandal. And it feels like people are coddling the people that were out there really attacking um, Ed Pisker and trying to isolate him and, and turn people against him. And there have been a lot of really bad tweets about it. I didn't want to talk about it, but there was one set of tweets that I thought, you know, we'll cover this in Stupid Tweet of the Week. And this is from Cheryl Lynn Eaton. You probably have never heard of Cheryl Lynn Eaton. Cheryl Lynn Eaton is a comic book writer of no real esteem never really written anything that anyone knows about. But Sherilyn Eaton is a Marvel Comics writer and is going to be writing on the big Blood Hunt event that's coming up in the not-too-distant future. It's going to be a 60-issue event, the biggest event Marvel has done in quite some time. Sherilyn Eaton is working on that project still, even after stating the, the things that she states right here. Horrible news regarding Pisker and frustrating to realize that many awful people will use his death as a weapon to harass and abuse the same individuals they targeted before, talking about your Alex DeCampis and your Ramon Villalobos and your Daryl Ayos and all those kind of people. And then stated, and I believe those very people were using Pisker prior to his death via the creation of alts that were well aware would be attributed to him and causing him a great deal of distress. Some of the most fucking outstanding mental gymnastics I've ever seen in my life it wasn't Alex DeCampi, it wasn't Ramon Villalobos, it wasn't Daryl Ayo, or any of the people that Ed Pisker actually named in his fucking suicide note. It was actually people creating alt accounts to support Ed Pisker that we had to have known, or people had to have known, would, would attribute those alt accounts to Ed Pisker himself so they could pile on him for something else he didn't fucking do. Tell me you're in the Whisper Network without telling me you're in the Whisper Network. That's what this is. Uh, you know, this idea that uh, people were out there creating alt accounts to try to fool people into thinking that they were Ed Piscor. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it's projection because who do we know are the people who go out and create alt accounts and uh, and try to boost their argument? It's these pieces of shit that are in the Whisper Network. And to use the word targeted, you know, Alex DeCampi is being targeted. Uh, Ramon Villalobos is being targeted. Daryl Ayo is being targeted. Um, they're not being targeted. Targeting is what they do when they just go after somebody. What they are getting is they are getting a reaction to the verified things that they have said and done for over 10 years. That's not being targeted. That's being responded to. That's getting pushback. That's what they're getting right now. You know, targeting is what the Whisper Network does when they sit in the, their little rooms and they say things like, who are we canceling today? <laughs> and they pick a target to go after because they see somebody that they can bring down, somebody that they're jealous of because they're more successful than they are. That is targeting. When you just see some of the things that are out there, you know, especially with Alex DeCampi, she's like, you know, I'm not quoting this one, but this is the gist of it. For all the people defending or supporting Ed Pisker, you, you've you never thought his art was good. This is a fucking life we're talking about. We're not talking. Get the fuck out of here with that fucking juvenile behavior and that juvenile mindset. A fucking dude died here. I don't, I don't have to be a fan of Ed Pisker's work. It's not upset. about that at this point. Yeah, to be upset that you drove, that you and your mob drove him to suicide. I don't have to be, a, you know, like, I don't even have to get there. I will say, I didn't know Ed Piscor. I never met Ed Piscor. What I'd seen of his work, like, I checked out Red Room. You know, I looked at Hip Hop Family Tree. It wasn't my cup of tea. 
You know, it just wasn't to my tastes. And that's fine. That has no bearing, no bearing whatsoever on whether or not it's a tragedy that he took his own life. You absolute ghoul. Yeah, and, and just just the, the way people respond to this, the, the people that were damned in there, uh, without really an ounce of contrition. Yeah, and not, not an ounce of contrition. They know they'll be protected by the Heidi McDonald's and the Rich Johnstons. I've already seen that Rich Johnson has responded to several of my posts on this subject. I don't see what his tweets are because I've got him muted because I have no use for him. I have no use for liars and, uh, and, and charlatans and the people that are in this Whisper Network. I have no use for people who sit around and decide who it is that they're going to try to destroy. Um, so I don't, get to, I, don't, I don't see his tweets. The only thing that I notice is I notice when people are responding to him and, uh, you know, in my thread and I see like his name on, on their response. And then I just, I don't even bother to go look at what he said because it's not going to be anything of interest to me anyway. Uh, you know, I, I do what I think we need to do with all of these people. I just absolutely ignore them and have no interest in anything they have to say and give them no oxygen. And the fact that we're even talking about them here is a little bit disgusting. The fact that I've even had to mention their name ever is disgusting because they don't deserve it. They don't deserve a moment of, uh, of our time. They don't deserve any work. They don't deserve any place in this industry. Uh, they are horrible, horrible human beings. It's just been real eye-opening. Obviously, um, when everything went down and the, the scale of the tragedy and you, you realize what's happening, it kind of guts you and in, in you kind of see what's going on. But just to, to see how the industry has reacted and the amount of people that are protecting these people and acting like they did nothing wrong, and that Ed Pisker was a pedophile. Well, what, you don't support the women he was abusing? There's literally no evidence that he ever abused anybody. Literally, no, not a single ounce of evidence stating that he ever abused anybody. He talked to a girl that was 17 years old. He probably shouldn't have done that. He admitted that he probably shouldn't have done that. He understood that the optics were bad, but he ne there's nothing actual sexual in any of those fucking screenshots that were released and i guarantee you that is the most incriminating stuff that she had is the stuff that she actually put out there there was yeah. nothing there yeah and it was it was painted in such a way and we even we even said like the way that it looks the way that it's presented it looks bad it you know it, it looks bad but we always had the caveat that uh you know it's we're, we're waiting to hear the other side of the story we're waiting to see the other half of those texts we're waiting for you know ed to come out and contextualize them and he did contextualize them and sadly it was in his suicide note uh but uh, he did contextualize them and then everybody was kind of like ah oh, you know there's this what he's saying is making a lot of sense you know like i can kind of see uh you know what his uh, what his point is and that you know maybe this wasn't as, uh, as untoward as it was presented, but you don't get the benefit of the doubt. And even, you know, and, and Ed knew, Ed knew that even if he disproved all this, even if he took them to court, even if he won the lawsuit and they were forced to apologize and, you know, retract everything, he knew that for the rest of his life, no matter what he put out, Alex DeCampi would be there to say what a terrible, you know, monster he was. Ramon Villalobos would be there to say what a terrible monster he was. Ramon Villalobos, who hated him prior to that and had put out some tweets about how much he disliked him and was gleeful at the idea that maybe uh, there were some girls out there that were victims of some untoward behavior from Ed. Not because, uh, you know, he has any empathy for victims, but because it would allow him to get at one of the people that he's jealous of and that he hates. And I'm just, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of these people in the industry. I'm tired of people like this being given oxygen. Uh, you know, I, I, these, these are just hateful, petty, jealous people. And, you know, like a harpy, Alex DeCampi is just perched on top of the comic book industry, just surveying the landscape, waiting to see who she can swoop down on and devour. And it's disgusting. And I'm tired of pretending that it's not, um, you know, it's like, I don't really get into a lot of these things because, you know, for the most part, I've, I've just always ignored people like that. But I'm, I'm at the point now where it, it needs to be, it, it needs to be known and, they need, you know, we need more people like Greg Smallwood in the industry who at great personal risk to his career actually stood up and took a stand. You know, it's different when Rob Liefeld does it. Rob Liefeld, he doesn't need to work again. Greg does. And yet Greg had the courage of his convictions to stand up. And I respect the hell out of that. And there are so many voices in this comic book industry that should be standing up and condemning this. And they're not. And uh, it's because they're moral cowards. Well, I do think the, the fallout of this is going to be much worse than people are anticipating. You know, Marvel has done essentially nothing in reaction to this. Cheryl Lynn Eaton, who had some uh, pretty not nice things to say about Ed Pisker's passing and trying to pass around the buck rather than talking about what we can do better, is still working on Blood Hunt. DC Comics essentially, as far as we can tell, has done nothing about this. And your creators like your Greg Smallwoods out there, 
that actually have talent, they're going to take their talents and they're going to fucking leave, whether they announce it or they don't announce it. Because I guarantee you anybody with, with an ounce of empathy, with an ounce of decency, is not going to let themselves be put in a position to have to work for companies that support shit like this. And they're all going to take their shit and they're not going to go make crowdfunded comic books. They're probably just going to go other, into other industries. If they have the talent and the ability to do it, they'll just walk away for good. Because at this point, when you have something like this happen, and it feels like nothing is going to get better. It's only going to get worse as the fallout. Nobody's going to learn a single lesson about this. The people with talent, with the, the people with means, the people with the ability to do anything else are going to do anything else. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing like a big exodus um, in comics in general uh, and uh, all the talents leaving and uh, the industry will be poorer for it and the sales will continue to shrink. And then eventually all these jobs that these vultures, uh, you know, stab each other in the back over, all those jobs will be gone. And the last little, uh, the last little industry that they could possibly get a foothold in and have any power over, uh, that'll be gone. So, you know, they, they hasten their own demise. And, uh, you know, sadly, the comic industry will eventually go with it. Uh, at least the mainstream. And that's sad because it's been such a part of our lives for so long. It's an American institution. But you know what? Everything, everything burns eventually, and you guys, let the, you guys let the rot in. You guys let it in, and you let it run unchecked. I don't know, man. It, it, was, just, it was a rough week. It's been a rough couple of weeks, obviously. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people that are just like talking about, like, what am I even, what am I even doing in this industry? And I've, I've, had, I've had some of it, too. It's like, what, what am I doing here? This is a den of, a den of just absolutely the worst people. I mean... Richard's not wrong when he says that I fought the Taliban and comics professionals are the worst people I've ever encountered. 